But it's in there. There's no doubt in my mind it's in there. No doubt Bob Corbin believes gold is hidden in the Superstition Mountains east of Phoenix. That's why the former attorney general has journeyed into this wilderness hundreds of times over the past 50 years. The reporters when I was attorney general, they asked me why I like to go in there so much. I told them that's the only place I can go where you can't get to me. Gold has been found here, but its source has been in dispute from the beginning. It all started in the late 1800s when a German prospector named Jacob Waltz emerged from the superstitions with gold ore. That created quite a stir in Phoenix. Before he died in 1891, he supposedly left clues to the location of his mine. Uh, he also, when he died, had 24 pounds of very, very rich gold ore underneath his bed in a candle box. The legend of the Lost Dutchman Mine was born. The Lost Dutchman Mine was brought to popular attention by the 1949 film Lust for Gold, starring Glenn Ford as Jacob Waltz. But it wasn't the movie that brought Bob Corbin to Arizona. It was the legend of the mine. Well, I was a Hoosier back in Indiana, and I was going to Indiana University. And one of the things we had to do was write a theme on a subject, and I picked Lost Mines. And in reading and researching, one of them was the Lost Dutchman Mine, and from that point on, I was hooked. The Lost Dutchman Mine is the holy grail, the great granddaddy of all lost mine stories. Ron Feldman operates the OK Corral in Apache Junction. He's also spent decades in the mountains on a quest for gold. I've spent 37 years of my life looking for it, but people from all over the United States come looking for the Lost Dutchman Mine, all over from the world, actually. Uh, I have had people coming out for the last 35 years, the same people coming to hunt this thing, and now their children and grandchildren come out and hunt this thing. Organized treks have been made into the superstitions at least as early as 1934. One year, the Dons of Phoenix, an organization preserving local culture, welcomed over 2,000 guests. They arrived in busloads. Over the years, visitors have been entertained with Dutchman lore and the opportunity to pan for gold. The day culminated with the recreation of Jacob Waltz's story. Near the west face of the superstitions on the streets of Goldfield, tourists soak up the old west atmosphere, trying to grasp what it might really have been like a hundred years ago. This site marks the spot of the original gold mining town. We revived it over the last 20 years. We've been fixing it up and opened it up for tourism and stuff like that. A lot of people just love the history. Maybe they love to feel a little heat from gold fever down in the Goldfield mine. Around Goldfield are several abandoned mines like the Queen here, filled with water, its secret safe. The secret of the Lost Dutchman's mine, over a century old, also remains safe. But that doesn't deter those who seek it. He said that his mine was two miles back from the face. Well, which, what does he mean by back? Did he mean back into the superstitions where you're right at the foot of Weaver's Needle two miles back or out this way two miles back? And it's little things like that that screw people up <laughs> for 100 years. <laughs> what I learned real quickly is, well, actually, it wasn't too quick. It took me 25 years to learn where the Dutchman wasn't. Since I've been looking for since 1957 for it, I've come up with a lot of, a lot of clues. But uh, there's no question, a lot of people say there's no gold in those mountains, and there is. The superstitions have an air of mystery about them, a whisper of danger. There have been over a hundred documented deaths in this wilderness. A lot of people have died looking for the mine. You know, it's, it's real easy. It's a, it's a harsh environment. You go out there without the right equipment and supplies and water, and uh, it's pretty easy to get dead in a hurry. Some of them have been shot, killed over a piece of dirt that they thought was the, they had the location and they didn't want anybody else around. I think it's an obsession. People go in there, some people go in with the idea they're gonna find it. And it gets a hold of them and it destroys their lives. All the more reason to pack a bit of perspective, along with the pick and ax on a trek into the superstitions. This land is beautiful on its own, without what may be a fool's promise of hidden riches. But that fact doesn't deter the most ardent of seekers. They leave only to return. There's something about those mountains that they're very rough, 
and uh, just something about them intriguing. But you can't go in there with the thought you're going to find it, because 99 out of a multi-million times, you're not going to.